Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am here with Simon Spurrier, one of our Marvel comic writers. Very nice to be here. Just got in. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, slightly broken. Uh, apologies for waffle. I mean, I waffle at the best of times, but when I'm jet lagged, waffle is a new word I gotta inject into my oh, vocabulary. Uh, chuntering on, you do that one. On. Yeah, I get very British when I'm tired. <laughs> well, I mean, I know you kind of just stepped into the Comic Con, but what's the environment been like so far? Uh, it's wonderful. I mean, it's always a treat coming to New York. It's always a treat coming into the show. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, somebody was saying the other day, like I love going to the San Diego show and I love coming here, but they're so different because. You go to the San Diego show, and it's like the whole city has been taken over by the convention. That's sure. great. You feel like the whole city is there. You come to the New York show, and it's like the rest of the city barely notices. Life is going know. on. And that's wonderful, too, because <laughs> you can come and do the hardcore geek, and then you can go out and just do New York. That's wonderful. I love you. Yeah. You get to 11th Avenue, and suddenly everyone's in yeah, costume. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. Dr. Strange? Like taxi drivers <laughs> arching eyebrows. <laughs> what the hell is... Oh, it's coming. Swinging comic, from God. buildings off to the <laughs> yeah. Javits Center. Yeah. No, it's a treat. And it's like... Uh, it's been three years since I was at this show for oh, obvious incredible. reasons. Yeah. And and it's like the smell of popcorn, the sound of all the announcements, and it's bang, straight back there. It's like I was never away. It's really cool to be back. So obviously we've been lucky to have you for quite a few years now, yep. but you had just an extensive career before that. We were just talking about the fact that you were an art director for the BBC yes, before I this. Was. I believe you were a cook as well. Yeah, of all sorts. I did so I, I kind of uh, I always wanted to be a writer, but I, I went into prose before anything else. So I've oh, got, yeah. like, I used to write novels. I've got several um, crime novels under my belt. And then did a bunch of art directing and realized that that involved actually dealing with other human beings. Fair, which isn't, fair. It's not my forte. <laughs> uh, had a couple of, like, really genuinely humiliating experiences because I was, like, early 20s dealing with these extremely experienced 50-something props guys who don't like being told what to do even by somebody their age, let alone this What's arrogant better? little guy <laughs> in his 20s. Um, and they made my life a living hell, rightly so. And I was like, well, you know what? The one thing that I am good at that I can control yeah. there's no need for any interaction is to write. So that's when I started getting into it more, became professional, I came to comics quite late in life. I didn't I didn't discover comics until I was about 16 or 17. And then I was like, oh, actually, they're considerably more than I thought. That's and then insane. 2000 AD, working towards the American market, got my first gig with Marvel, and just sort of never looked back. You know? I love that. I mean, it's when you first realize what a deeper story there is to comics, there's so much human emotion that yep. goes into it. And we always talk about that with Marvel, yep. especially Stan Lee introducing the idea that there's like, a morally gray aspect to every character, right? They struggle with human values. Yeah, well, and I think when you're a writer, it's so exciting oh, it's, to it's do it in so there. It's so fertile. The, we talk a lot about the sort of internal and external conflicts. Yeah. People, when you read, especially a superhero comic, you're seeing lots of action, you're seeing lots of violence, yeah. you're seeing lots of characters interacting. But generally speaking, the themes, the arcs, are about characters dealing with internal conflicts. And that's the stuff that moves you in a way that the action... So let's doesn't. talk about how that fits in to some yep. of the characters that you write for Reign of X, um, Legion of X yeah, as yeah. well, which is a very new one that I'm very excited about. How does all of that inform the process of how you go about your characters? And I mean, Gosh. you chose Nightcrawler, my friend. Yeah, no, so I already was, know what it's coming It's kind of wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I, I gravitate towards characters who are complicated and nuanced. Um, I was given a brief when I first came into the sort of the... the current ex office um, the era of Krakoa the brief was John Hickman has set up this moment where Nightcrawler talks about having to create a new mutant religion that seems like your sort of thing Simon <laughs> off you go um, so it was a, a heavy brief to deal with and, and that's why the book and its successor Legion so that was Way of X now we're doing Legion of X they're sort of like seasons in a TV show that's the way I yeah. mentally arrange it so it's, it's sort of heavy themes, but it's always characters doing thoughtful, interesting, unusual stuff. I mean, I'm a weirdest. I love doing weird stuff. And so the characters I use tend to be the weird ones. You're around right? all of the best people yeah. then. <laughs> it's so much more interesting than people who are simple, you know. We're all complicated, flawed human beings. And if we, if we want to move our readers and provide a, an entertainment experience, which is more than just punching, which... Yeah. Punching's great. I like seeing punching in a comic book. But punch also, with reason. Yeah, yeah punch <laughs> with heart, punch with emotion. Um, and those are the characters that do that. You know, Nightcrawler's very interested in 
ideas of ideology and faith and morality and um, religion, which is clearly the, the heart and soul of his story and the yeah. books I'm doing with him. Legion, David Haller is a character that I have a history with. So many years ago, I wrote uh, a series called Le uh, X-Men Legacy, which the idea there was that uh, the mutant metaphor has been used for all sorts of things. You know this. Uh, it speaks to racism. It speaks to xenophobia. It speaks to um, homophobia. It speaks to attitudes towards othering in all sorts of lives. It's a very useful and beautiful narrative metaphor to play with. In X-Men Legacy, I used the mutant metaphor as a way of talking about mental health, depression yeah. specifically, but just anybody who struggles with their own mentality. And, and that's something that I, I know about myself. You know, I've always had issues with that. So it, it felt like a very important story. And I still can't come to a show like this without somebody coming up to me, often in tears, and saying, Sai, that story gave me the strength to go on or allowed me to resolve an issue, whatever it is. People yeah. tell me amazing story. And, and of course, it's not me that did that. It was them that did that. But to be able to have played a role in catalyzing whatever positive outcomes they have had in their lives through the medium of superheroes. Absolutely. Like don't, don't you dare tell me that these aren't profoundly important archetypal characters who can change people's lives, because they can. And that's something that I will always be ridiculously proud of. You know, I can, I can go to my grave knowing that I have helped people. I've made people feel better about themselves, which is a great thing to be able to say. Anyway, I'm, I'm waffling. No, I told you I will, I, I will, like, I will jet lag. I mean, I won't cry today, but I think we are very lucky to have you and have people who well, are willing to put that into our stories and like give us an outlet stuff. to feel those emotions. Yeah. Well, it, and as I always say, it, and as I've just said, it's not me. That's, I, I love telling stories that are about things. And if people are able to take those stories and use them to help themselves, then that's their strength. That's their one. Then I hope you meet someone in a nightcrawler outfit on that floor today. <laughs> I hope so too. I know you gotta get your steps in. I know it's taking <laughs> time, but thank you so much it's for coming It's been a great pleasure.